that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perisheth, don't miss this, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory of the appearing of Jesus Christ. I can't help but wonder if whenever they read that letter and they got to that phrase where he said, though it be tried by fire, they didn't just pause. And I kind of think that there was probably some tears that maybe welled up in some eyes and maybe ran down some cheeks as they thought about some family members, some friends that had given their life for the cause of Christ. They were faithful, yet they died. And then Paul reminds them of why they were willing to make that sacrifice. In verse number 8. He says, Jesus Christ, you, you haven't seen him. But you love him. In whom, thou, in whom though now you see him not yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. You see, why did they did it, do it? Why were they willing to give their lives for Christ? Why? Because they loved him. Can we say it this way? Because they knew Him. They really knew Him. Friend, do you want to know Christ this morning? To know Him will require sacrifice. It will require suffering. And no, you may not be faced with the decision to stand for Christ or to give your life. I hope and pray that it doesn't come here to America. It might. Well, what if you decided to sacrifice some things that are a little bit easier than your life? Like your time to have a faithful walk with the Lord and His Word each and every day. Faithfulness to His house when the doors are open. To sacrifice your concern of what people might think about you if you talk about Jesus. To sacrifice your comfort to plug in and serve Christ in some way. You say, well, Kyle, that... That doesn't even seem comparable to the things that Paul went through. And you're right. But why would we think we'd be willing to suffer like Paul if we aren't willing to sacrifice in the simple? 